and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who taught the martyr St. Wenceslaus to place the heavenly kingdom before an earthly one, grant through his prayers that denying ourselves we may hold fast to you with all our heart. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves to the Lord, Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job, and that there is no one on earth like him, blameless and upright? fearing God and avoiding evil. But Satan answered the Lord and said, It is for nothing that Job is God-fearing. Have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with your protection? You have blessed the work of his hands and his livestock are spread over the land. But now put forth your hand and touch anything that he has and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand upon his person. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so one day, while his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing, and the asses grazing beside them, and the Sabines carried them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven, and struck the sheep and their shepherds, and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, and put those tending them to the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While yet he was, while he was yet speaking, another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job began to tear his cloak and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate on the ground and said, Naked I have come forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful to God. The word of the Lord. In 
Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my, my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. From you, let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night. Though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies. O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts, and he took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is the greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. What does it mean to be great? I think that's a question all of us ask ourselves at some point in time. I might ask, we look at the world and say, okay, there's fame, there's fortune, there's legacy, there's all these different things that seem neat. I want some of that. So we ask ourselves, what does it mean to really be great? Well, surprise, surprise, the Lord's version, his idea, the true idea of what it means to be great is completely opposite than what the world offers just heard in the first reading all about Job and all the temptations and all the trials and all the misfortunes that he had gone through. Job knew what it meant to be great. See, Job was a righteous person. Job trusted in the Lord. He followed the Lord. And even when all of these different things were taken away from him, he did not curse God. He did not get impatient. He did not fall away from his faith. That's what it means to be great. In the gospel, even the disciples are starting to argue, you're not the greatest, I'm the greatest disciple. No, it's not you, it's me. There were three of them at this point who already saw the transfiguration up on Mount Tabor in the Holy Land. They saw Jesus and pick them. You three, come with me, Peter, James, and John, let's go up. We're going to pray. He was transfigured. So imagine what they were thinking. Well, he picked me above all these other ones. I'm the greatest but that temptation, once, see, once we get to the point of adulthood, that's when we start to complicate things. Later, after the disciples are doing that, Jesus brings a child and he says, this is the greatest one among all of you. And it's not to smack the disciples in the face and say, yeah, this child is better than you are. But there's some truth to that because a child's heart is innocent. A child's heart is pure. A child's heart is not worried about, am I the greatest or not? Innocence and purity and trust in the Lord, that is what makes us great. When the world sees you as not being great, that's when you know you're doing something right. When the world doesn't recognize you or give you any kind of fame, that's when you are after the Lord. 
you have your own gifts, your own talents, your own vocation in life that the Lord calls you to. And that's what makes you great when you follow it according to his precepts. According to his will. According to how he has asked you to follow him. May the Holy Spirit then give us the grace to be humble, to be meek, to be childlike, not childish. Childlike, innocent, and pure in heart to follow after him. And not to seek greatness, but to seek humility. Not to seek fame and fortune, but to seek the Lord above all things. Let us stand now and offer these needs and petitions on behalf of our community and on behalf of the church. We pray to Almighty God for Holy Mother Church that she might never neglect her mission to evangelize the world. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael Duca, all priests and deacons, all religious, and those who seek to evangelize the culture and lead others to Christ for their fortitude and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. We also pray for all teachers, all those who work in the education system, those charged with the responsibility of forming young minds in the faith and in education. Let us pray to the Lord. For those preparing for marriage, that the Holy Spirit come and soften their heart to truly present themselves to the sacrament of matrimony. Let us pray to the Lord continue to pray for those from the Lake Charles area, from the Mobile and Pensacola areas who have been affected by Hurricanes Laura and Sally as they seek to rebuild their homes, their businesses, and their lives at this time. For their comfort, for their consolation, and for their strength, let us pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way this morning for Ivan and Mabel LeBlanc, for Donald LeBlanc, Joshua Huto, Winston LeBlanc, and Andre Dugas whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. And in the peace and the silence of our own hearts now, we trust in the Lord's greatness, his humility for us. We present our own needs and petitions. Almighty God, you who call us to be great, to be great according to your will and not our own. Give us the grace to follow after your call according to our vocation in life. We also ask that you hear and answer these prayers we present before you at this Mass. Answer them according to your time and according to your will through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Wenceslaus, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on feeble, on the feeble, bestow strength to bear your witness to Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. those unable to receive Holy Communion, whether here in person or joining us on Facebook, we offer this act of spiritual communion. My Lord Jesus, I believe that you truly are present here in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all else, and I desire to receive you into my very soul. But since I cannot receive you sacramenta sacramentally now, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly and entirely to you. May I have the grace to never be parted from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Before we go, as you know, on Monday mornings, uh, the crew from the diocese has, have been coming to pick up the donated items to bring over to Lake Charles. They're not going to be doing that today, so we don't need a crew of people to help load the trailer. However, we do have some cleaning supplies that we're going to try to box up and, and consolidate so that the final pickup on uh, next Monday on October 8th, um, it'll go a little bit smoother for us. So if you're free and have an extra 15 minutes, or so this morning after Mass, if you want to meet us over in the Activity Center. Everything is uh, unlocked and open and ready for us, but we're just going to put the cleaning supplies together in boxes and bags, clear off the tables to make room for whatever comes this week, and then on October 8th, next Monday, everything will be brought over to Lake Charles. With that being said, I hope everybody has a great day, a great week. I hope you all like cool weather because it's coming. I'm very excited for it. So you all have a great day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.